thank you for coming and talking to me again. And may Allah Alhamdulillah. use both of us and in particularly you uh, to enlighten us regarding uh, real issues, uh, practical issues, real issues around us. Dr. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Yes. So today I want to talk about marriage, if that's okay with you. And so, yeah, which, which it's a never, it's a never ending topic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I suppose we, 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 we got some feather fluffed with our last meeting and uh, I, I, I don't follow the comments, but I can imagine what some of them might be in any case. Uh, yeah, it's important. It's central marriage is central. So what's on your mind today, brother? So. You know, when I talk to couples and I'm doing mm -hmm. you know, counseling of different sorts, um, so I see two kind of like extremes, right? So there's yes. like, for example, I'll give you an example where I am in this area, mm -hmm. a large community okay. of Yemeni Muslims, and that's fine. But a lot of our Yemeni brothers and fathers, they're like completely like, like what usually we call male chauvinistic pigs. So mm -hmm. one, some cases that lean on this side that are, and then you have other cases that where it's like the feminist uh, mindset of some of the sisters. Uh, it's really like take an, a toll on many of the marriages because the wives don't feel... Uh, don't respect their husbands or, uh, you know, from a checklist point of view, not from an emotional point mm -hmm. of view, from a checklist point of view, he's doing everything right, right? Like uh, he's providing, mm -hmm. he's there, he's spending time with the kids, you know, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's giving her quality time. And mm -hmm. sometimes even after everything, you know, like I said, again, the emotional aspect is separate. But from a checklist point of view, the women are doing every, mm -hmm. I mean, the guy is doing everything and the women are still not just complaining, but overly complaining. And part of uh, that, I think, is, is, is an effect of feminism. It's also like comparing her husband with other husbands or richer families or, you know, so, so you got this male chauvinistic pig and then you got this wife who threatens the husband, for example, to call the cops every time there's a conflict. And, uh, mm -hmm. or, or that wife that, uh, you know, just threatens to leave and ask for divorce every time. It's like divorce is like their blackmail, blackmail pistol where every time the husband does something mm -hmm. she doesn't like, she's like, well, I want a divorce. And then the guy's like, well, oh, dear. you know, so. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, but uh, yeah, these are battle lines. Mm. These two extremes, the male chauvinistic pig, and then the the effect of uh, I don't really need you, uh, feministic feminazi uh, type. Mm -hmm. um, so, where am I going with all of this? Uh, so, I think I'll make it more practical. I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about two different cases from two different sides to make it more practical. So recently okay. I, had, I had a case. Uh, the father came from another state. The daughter wants to marry a brother. The daughter wants to marry a brother. And there's an institute we have here for domestic violence. So she mm -hmm. wants to marry this guy. And the father said, absolutely no. He's not Yemeni. He's from another culture another Arab culture, you're not going to marry him. And that's that. And so mm -hmm. the sister came and she was in that uh, domestic violence place, the shelter place for a very long time, like six months. And in the same time, trying to convince her father. But finally, the father came, I sat down with the father. So the father says, if I'm telling her, if she marries that guy, I'm going to divorce my wife. So this is the what? mentality. Yeah, Wallah I'm not lying. If she, my daughter, marries that guy she likes, I'm going to divorce my wife. Uh -huh. And so now the daughter is like, 
I don't want to, my parents to get divorced, you know, but she loves this guy. Right. Uh -huh. And this is the type of things that are happening on one side. So it's like total like dominance. The whole time I was there, the wife said not one mm -hmm. word, not one word to me. The wife said, yeah, the husband was talking and, mm -hmm. uh, and then I said to the guy, I said, what you're doing to your wife is it's injustice. This is injustice. The yes, way of course it is. Doing this whole thing. And I said, if your daughter, the prophet said, if two people love each other, if two people love each other, then they have the more right to marry each other, you know, and you should be, yes. you know, you put your conditions, you put, you know, your worries. And every time I'd ask him, what's the reason for no, he wouldn't tell me the cultural reason, right? He wouldn't, he told his daughter that he yeah. it to me. He'd be like, mm -hmm. I just don't like him. And I said, well, just talk, meet mm -hmm. them, talk to the dad, just see what happens. So on the one side, you got this like person who has that male chauvinistic or and this is like a real example mm -hmm. and on the other side mm -hmm. you have for example this brother who works very hard he has a business he's doing good he's providing for his family but it's like mm -hmm. everything that he could possibly be doing wrong the wife is upset about it and just leaving him at no peace right uh, this I, is I, another I, case you're, you're referring that's to. That's another case. That's another case, right? So I mean, okay, okay. Very disrespectful okay. to the husband. So please, mm -hmm. uh, any words? I, I know maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe I pulled too much, and it's too broad. Uh, no, it's okay. We need to. We need to open up the second case a little bit more before I address it. But let me address the first case, inshallah. Um, one question I have is why was the girl in the domestic violence house? Because she didn't want to live with her parents and she was uh, waiting for the brother that uh, she was waiting for. She was trying to convince her parents to say yes. She was waiting for the brother that she wants to marry, that she was in love with, to mm -hmm. get his parents to agree because his parents were scared that if they got married, then uh -huh. he the father would try to hurt their son. So that's in the background. Oh, dear. Okay. So she was stuck in a... In All a, right. Well, a, yeah. Yeah. This is, a, this is a case where you've got um, injustice. All right. And you have to... If you can't correct the injustice, then you have to flee from it. You see, I think that's the Sharia. So uh, here's a case, a clear cut case where the girl uh, should divorce her parents. Unfortunately, I say yeah. this uh, because uh, unfortunately for the mother's sake, you understand, because uh, the mother's not at fault here, except that she's not being um, properly um, uh, responsible f towards her daughter and uh, let me s let me expound on that because what happens is these women um these mothers they adopt the attitude well i did it i suffered the repression the oppression i suffered the chauvinism you have to as well and uh, this is a social psych psychological reality it's well documented throughout the world it's mm. not just in islam it's in mm. all cultures mm. wherever this male chauvinism rises its head uh, raises its head rather and so um this woman uh, unfortunately is, she's no different than a, a a mother who gets in a car with a drunk husband with her children Mm -hmm. If he gets into an accident and they're harmed, she and the children are going to be harmed too. God's not going to blame it on the husband. He's going to blame the mother. Should she know but she knew better mm -hmm. than to stay with this man and uh, remain, you know, in the car with a man who's drunk. Now, this man is drunk on his pride and arrogance. Mm -hmm. That's the truth of the matter. Okay. And he's going to be one of these who stands at the on the day of judgment and says, and the angel's going to, you know, say, well, why were you doing this? Why were you doing that? And he said, well, we're just following what our fathers did. That's no excuse. Mm -hmm. It's mindlessness. That's taklid. 
Okay, mm. that's the blind following the blind. There's no justice in that. And Islam is all about justice. You mm. see, so um, when justice is not upheld, then the walls of Islam uh, fall. Mm. It's just like the walls of Jericho fell. Okay, there's no protection for the city. There's no protection for the Ummah from any and all influence and idea and creature, this dimensional and other dimensional that wants to do harm to the Juma. So men, when they have this attitude and women, when they don't stand up to the men, they're promoting injustice and they're destroying Islam. There's no deen in this. It's the, it's the opposite of what the deen is, because the deen is all about love, it's all about marriage, it's all about kindness, it's all about uh, uh, the, the, the precious love and respect that people have for each other in, in, in marriage, within the confines of marriage. Uh, whether it's polygamy or monogamy, it doesn't matter. If it's polygamy, then the women have to have the same respect for each other, and that's also failing, you see. There, there are situations where that's called for. And if, if, the, if the women are going to become just so selfishly oriented that they're not going to want for their sister what they want for or want or have for themselves, this is not Islam. Okay? So um, this, this is injustice. So the daughter has every right to divorce her parents. There are cases in secular law where that has happened. And the judge says, yes, you have the right to divorce your parents legally. They're mm. still your parents. You can't deny that. But legally, they have no more authority over you because they are not exercising justice. They are not exercising good reason. Mm. They are not exercising logical thought. They're being mindless here. You see, this is taklid. So he can't answer your question. So this is very cut and dry. You no, know, and case. then you know, of course, he uses um, them to his advantage, right? Well, you know, the rights of yeah. the mother, the rights of the father. How could she be doing this to us? You know, we raised her better. Blah blah blah. <laughs> and and the nonsense. poor nonsense. The poor, like this. She's twenty-one years old. She wants to get married. Mm -hmm. The guy is decent. I even found out through different. You know, it's it's my area. I know the area. Uh -huh. The family yeah, yeah. is a well-respected family. They're they're it's not mm -hmm. like they're they're not irreligious, you know. They they yeah. you know they have a good family reputation, so there was no yeah. real reason to say no. And he didn't even want to meet them, you know. Like let's say if I have yeah. a daughter and Mary, mm -hmm. uh, but that that's yes. so. But but you know the parents have to give in, right? I mean, yeah, if, they should. And and so if the girl likes a guy, then the 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 and and you don't have a strong case, uh, yeah, you know, then you should give in. Uh, but parents, he, he, he had no case. This this father had no case. No case whatsoever. Oh. Yeah, no, none whatsoever. And this is this is another case of asabia. You see, this is a, uh, it, this is a tribal chauvinism. Okay, yeah, many, yeah, many. Please, okay, take your little curved knife and stick it in your own heart, not in your daughter's heart. Yeah, because that's what he did. So, I mean, okay. basically, you know, he told her, so, "Divorce your mom. You better come with us." And she's sitting there asking me, uh -huh. "What do I do?" I'm like, "Well, <laughs> I was trying to tell her. I mean, I was trying to tell her just leave your parents be." But she yeah. felt so bad, and yeah. she felt so no. guilty. That she went back with her parents, and I told her parents oh, that dear. she's probably going to end up no, meeting this is, you guys again. She's just this is sometimes this is a this is a victory for Shaitan. It's a victory for Shaitan. It's a clear victory for Shaitan. There's a, uh, there's no way that this man can be justified, not at all. Yeah. So Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. So um, Alhamdulillah. There you go. So I mean, but this is yeah. How, all over the place where guys are like i'll give you a great, great example this is very very common yes uh there is a uh a sister that's going to go somewhere and the and the husband says you can't go there there's too many men there okay mm -hmm. and then he himself is going to the gym to work out 
where mm-hmm. you know, women are the we least wearing the least clothes, right? <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's right. like double standard, uh, where mm-hmm. Sharia applies more to women than to men, and it only applies yeah. when you find it convenient. Um, so these are <laughs> very common things. And then, uh, so so that's one aspect. And I'm, I'm trying to look at not only in terms of this case, but how this has, both of these problems have permeated the Muslim world, right? Of and course. Have those women who disrespect their husbands. And then the one thing I wanted to ask you uh, about the, the feminist side um, mm-hmm. is that the wife is upset. She says that to the husband, I'm not going to bed with you. And that's now oh, yeah. mm-hmm. one month, two months, three months. She's upset. How do you solve this? He, if he doesn't go to bed, Divorce. Him, things are, things are going to get worse. If no, I, of course, after three or four months, there's no sex. That's automatic divorce. She's already divorced him. All right. Her job, her responsibility is to make sure that he doesn't complete, that he, he doesn't commit, commit Zena and to satisfy his sexual desires. Mm. I mean, the prophet made it very, very clear. This is going to happen. It's natural. It's Petra. A man Mm. walks down the street. He sees a woman that he finds attractive, and he immediately wants to have sex. And what did the prophet say? Go home. Have sex with your wife. Mm. That's what she's there for. Mm. Okay. I'll give you a case history. I just discussed this with uh, one of my students the other day. When I was practicing medicine, I had an old couple, a late middle-aged couple come to me and the wife said, doctor, you got to do something about my husband. He starts and he finishes and finishes within 30 seconds. Mm. I said, what can you do? And uh, I said, okay, well, I have some medicines that might help. We can try this. You try this and uh, come back and see me in about two or three weeks. And so they came back and the wife's complaining again, doctor, you got to tell him to stop. I said, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. I mean, how's he doing now? How long is he lasting? And uh, she said, oh, about three, maybe four minutes. I said, then what's the problem? And this is an improvement, right? Mm. And uh, she said, yeah, but he wants it two or three times a day. Mm. And I said to her, I said, woman, what? You don't have 10, 15 minutes for your husband mm. out of your very busy day? Is this a problem for you? Huh? Too much work? Too much effort? What is the problem here? Woman, tell me. Mm. No answer. You see, they're just being selfish. It's just a selfish thing. So, and why is it selfish? Well, maybe they stopped loving the guy years ago and they they don't want to admit it. Mm. And they're stuck in the material world. They're stuck with the nafs. Yeah. Okay. Well, if they're stuck with the nafs, that's fine. But it's not Islam. Mm. You see, this is not Islam. Mm-hmm. The uh, the nafs needs to be dead. You got to you got to die before you die. Mm-hmm. You see, and if you're not prepared to do that, you're not practicing uh, Islam. If you're giving your husband a hard time there just because he doesn't please you, that's okay. If he doesn't please you, you just be like the woman that the prophet chased down the street and said, "Don't divorce him. Don't divorce him." And she turned around and said, "I'm divorcing him." You know, and she might have said, well, you go sleep with him instead. You know, I, you know, that's fine. A woman has every right to divorce, but let's not play these games. Mm -hmm. That's childish. Mm. That's adolescent stuff. It's arrested development stuff. Mm. It's not adult. It's not mature. And the whole point of marriage is to bring us to spiritual maturity. Mm. That's what's what it's all about. And spiritual maturity means to override the nafs. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to override the nafs, you've got to stop being selfish. Mm-hmm. You've got to be self, stop being self-preoccupied. You've got to deal, do away with the pride. You've got to do away with the arrogance. And you've got to give and take where give and take is justified. Mm-hmm. You see? So this is not happening in most marriages. It's, it's a crying shame. And this is um, one of the reasons that... Harut and Marut uh, taught what they did because mm. when you destroy marriage, you give, you destroy justice because marriage and the sense of justice begins in the marriage bed. Oh, wow. Well, you do for me, 
I do for you. You do for right. me. You do. I do for you. Look, that's how it is. Come on, come on, but, darling. But then what happens Let's when the wife? Thing. What yeah. happens when the wife is angry? Let's say, uh, just as an example, the wife wanted uh, a, a certain car, and and he felt, no, I don't want to get this car. I'll get this car. And now the wife says, uh, uh, yeah, we're not going to bed because this is not okay. Oh well, that's that's childishness. That's pure childishness, okay? Look, it's, it's like this. You know the hadiths uh, that uh, heaven lay at the foot of the women, mm. okay? Well, let's take that a little bit logically and expand on it, okay? Mm. Why does heaven lay at the foot of the woman? Because the woman is meant to submit to the husband. Heaven lays in her example. Hmm. Because her submission to her husband reflects our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did the prophet not say if it were possible, I would have every wife worship their husband? Sure he did. Hmm. Okay. So in the face of the Western influence of this modern feminism, which comes out of the Frankfurt Jewish school of atheists, by the way, it's hmm. purposely prosecuted in order to destroy everything that's decent. So when women start thinking this way and they start reacting this way, because that's what, what, what happened, it's because they've been programmed to do it. Mm. They're watching Facebook, they're watching the movies, they're watching all this stuff, and they're not thinking anymore. They've mm. lost their mind mm. to Satan, mm. to the shaitans who put this stuff out there. And they're no longer part of Islam. It's a name only. Oh, it's in dress only. Oh, she's always so lovely. She always has the hijab on and she's always so modest and always so polite. What, what does she, you know, what's happening in I the mean, home? What's happening in just the bedroom? On that one point, uh, Dr. Umar, please forgive me for interrupting. Yes. On that very point, she's so polite. Like I've had husbands say to me, when she talks to me, she's always rude. When she talks to other guys, she's always so nice. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like the home... Yeah has become, instead of a place of peace, it's almost like a war zone. And sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, the no chauvinistic pig, the wife feels like she's walking on eggshells, right? She doesn't know what she'll do at what time where he's going to strike her. And then yeah. you have this other side, yeah. with the husband, the poor husband's in the house. He doesn't know, when am I going to do something wrong that's yeah. going to make her go yeah. terribly upset either? Yeah, this is it goes it goes both ways. This uh, this this street runs both ways. Uh, you know, from man to woman, woman to man. It depends on the dynamic of the relationship, the personalities of the couples, the individuals and the couples involved, uh, and what they're exposed to. It depends on their culture. Many times you'll find that people do not have an explanation for what they do, other than. That's what their culture demands of them, mm. you see. And um, they're, they're, but there's no real essence to what's taking place. There's no real reason. There's no scientific adab. Mm. You can't grab it. You can't name it because it's not there. They're just following. They're just reacting. They're not thinking anymore. And if you can't think and you can't ration and you can't come to a reasonable uh, compromise with the person who's your closest companion in life, then there's no Islam in that. There's no deen in that. You're just going through the motions. And when you've got a wife like that, who's polite to everybody else but their husband, this is hypocrisy. Mm. And not, it's worse than that. It shows a dual personality, and that's dangerous. That's downright evil. Yeah, I remember one case where the wife said to the husband, they're, they're, they're not in good terms, but the wife says to the husband, because they're going to a party with, to one of the friends that they had. So during the party, she gave him a lot of attention in front of the people, like holding hands, you know, yeah. and, and showing yeah, yeah. that we're a really good couple, where, you know, everything is perfect in our life. And mm -hmm. so now after that, this event, things happen, they're, they're in counseling and the guy's like, I just don't understand. She's so nice to me in this party. And then after the party, she's like, so mean to me, like, she's so abusive to me. I just like, how could she just do that? You know? And it's like, yeah. so, so, and, yeah. and these feministic sisters, 
they're always threatening not i mean i've seen this case after case they're always threatening we're not going to go mm -hmm. we're not going to go to bed don't come near me you know mm -hmm. and and they're, they're so it's like so interesting these these two phenomenons and and then the question mm -hmm. is how do you get out of these how do we tell people how do we teach people how they can get out of this and i don't know which well, one does more harm uh, i mean both are very harmful i don't know which one does more harm but um the 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 male chauvinistic pig is more like a cultural thing usually i've seen that is cultural yeah, yeah well, but they're both cultural now now yes yes they're both cultural yeah islam has a particular approach to male chauvinism that uh, has nothing to do with the prophet i mean you know the prophet said he loved you know perfume and women oh my god well this is what what muslims are doing they're not loving their women mm. they're, they're 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 owning them yeah they're 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 treating them as if they're uh, a possession. Uh, they're treating them worse than a slave, you see. This is not love, okay? So they're, this is not the Sunnah at all. Um, just, you know, just to start. So if that's not the Sunnah and they're not performing love, they don't have Islam. They have only the outward appearance of Islam, and this is also hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And on the day of judgment, they got a problem, not with me, not with you, but they got a problem with God Almighty. And, uh, you know, it may be, may be uh, that uh, it may be that the prophet will um, indeed intercede for them and they'll get out of hell after 30 or 40,000 years, however long it's going to be. But I sure wouldn't want to be in that case. Okay. And that's where these guys are headed. So that's where they're headed. Gentlemen, are you hearing me? You know, and if you're one of these chauvinists, you're certainly not a gentleman. Yeah. Okay. You're... That's all there is to it. You're not a gentleman. Salud, Salahuddin would slap you in the face. Hmm. Okay. Any one of you. So one of the things that some of the sisters have said to me and, and then yeah. you know, about this whole scenario is that sisters feel they have to take control or they have to go into survival mode, even if they're married, because they feel their men mm -hmm. are not real men. And that- well, That's a different matter. That's a different matter. But, but does yeah. that then make the women more uh, look, at least in appearance, like they're being feminist, but they're actually not? No. They're actually looking for the right mm -hmm. guy, so to say. Uh, they're looking for their husband. Yeah. I know, I know sisters that have been waiting for their husbands to change for like 10 years, you know, 15 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, yeah. so you also have this, like, kind of like a cycle, this vicious cycle, where, so you have the male chauvinistic pig, you got the feminism, and then you got the man who's not a man, and the wife reacting mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. Well, there's, there's something that happened for the first time in the world history after the Second World War uh, in this country. And then I think it spread throughout the world by virtue of multimedia. And that is the, what uh, Carlo Pietzner, a uh, German philosopher, described in, I think it was 1976. He called the phenomena of the boy men. He said, never in the history of the world have we had an entire generation of boy men okay mm. these are men who cannot face manhood they cannot take up the responsibilities for manhood and um, uh, this is a reality and the sisters are um, in a quandary over this because they can't find the man in this good-looking boy who looks like a man, but is not a, a man internally. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if he hasn't made it into manhood by the time he's 14, in other words, if he hasn't had these values instilled with him, the values of you know, hard work and responsibility and taking charge, okay, and being honest about your mistakes and admitting them. If mm. he hasn't taken this on by the time he's reached maturity, he's not going to do it. Mm. Those uh, characteristics are fixed by them.
Yeah. And it's a rare, rare individual who can change that after that point. So mm. now you have two, three generations of boy men. Mm. Okay. Now, this is another cause for polygamy. You see, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, many of these boy men, they're not, they're not uh, worthy of marriage. Mm. I don't know what they're going to do with their penis, but they're not worthy of marriage. Mm. Okay. Because they cannot govern what their penis indicates mm. when it stands up. Yeah. It may stand up and indicate a certain woman that they desire, but they cannot govern her. Mm. And that's what these women are objecting to, you see. I don't want to marry somebody who can't govern me. A woman wants to be manhandled. She wants to be governed. She needs that. It is fitra. Mm. But she can't get it. Mm. All right? Many can't get them. And the women who have such men, they don't want to share them. Mm. You see? And that's not Islam either. You see, I understand the ideal is monogamy. Of course, the ideal is monogamy. Mm. But what are you going to do, sister? What are you going to do? Are you going to force your sister into Zena mm. huh? by, by not permitting her access to your husband just because you're being selfish? Mm. And then you're going to go into uh, uh, a defensive override, mm. okay? which is what happened to my wife in Thailand. Mm. Okay, that's happened. Okay, so this is this is normal. It's natural, but you 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 should need. If you're maturing, you need to overcome this. You need to over override it. You see, what were all these women, the the, the wives of the prophet? What were they doing? Hmm. They were not after their own chariots. They were not after their own homes. They were not after their own double wide camel, for God's sake, please. Yeah. They lived next to each other in the masjid, in little huts, in little shacks. They woke up every morning with their same cooking fires, smelling each other's urine, for God's sake. Mm. Assalamu alaikum, sister. How shall we serve our husband today? That's the attitude. That's the mature attitude. And they, do, where is that attitude today? Where is it? I'll tell you where it is. Prophet Suleiman said in the book of Proverbs, a wise man is one in, in a thousand. A wise woman is one in 10,000. Wow. All right. So what are we talking? What are we talking about here? We're talking about numbers. Okay, and we're talking about no. You do the math. Okay, you take that same proportion and multiply it and divide it by the millions and the hundreds of thousands and the trillions that we've got in the world today, the billions that we've got in the world, and you're going to come up with a big number. Okay, mm. and it's going to be larger than the number of people that COVID is killing. <laughs> so this is a bunch of good women. All right, and more good men. And the women who are supposedly good are preventing each other from sharing these good men mm. because of this feminist chauvinism, because that's what it is as well, this protectionism. This is not Islam. Islam makes allowance for polygamy because it's practical. Because it's practical. It's, practical. it's a practical solution. Solution for what? The troubles and trials of this life which are many, not just war, not just, you know, cutting the throat war. There's cutting the mind war as well. There's mm. cutting of the soul. There's cutting of the consciousness. There's cutting of the, the heart. There are, broke, there are people out there with broken hearts, broken minds, broken bodies, and they're not worthy of marriage. They can't get married. Mm. They can't handle the responsibilities. So what's a good woman supposed to do? What did the prophet say? No, what did the Bible, what does the Quran say? Good women are for good men. Hmm. Am I not correct? Of course. 100%, 100%. Oh, of course. So let's stop all the nonsense. Let's stop all the pretense and get right down to the nitty gritty of this matter. Stop your feminist attitudes. Stop your Chauvinist attitudes. attitudes Get down in the pray, prayer rug and ask God to forgive you and to change your heart before you face 40,000 years in hell. 
My God, what's the matter with these people? Where have they, where has their mind gone? Do they not read the Quran? Do they not believe it? Do they not understand? Mm. Oh, oh, Jesus, I'm starting to sound like Imran Hussein now. Yeah, of course, <laughs> they don't understand. <sighs> oh boy, I get excited sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you know, anyway. So yeah I, I did i used to preach and you know I, I i get a little bit fired up sometimes but this 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 stuff this nonsense it's childish nonsense you know they should just be slapped in the face with the glove and say grow up come back when you grow up mm. one of the things i like about jordan peterson is he's bluntly frank you know about these matters. He's very, very frank about these matters. And he, he makes a lot of sense. As a psychologist, he makes a great amount of sense. I don't like his take on Freud, but it's okay. And I don't like his take on the Jews because he, he avoids, like Hollywood, they avoid everything that's wrong and promote everything that's good, you see. Um, so, but when he's talking about human nature and our basic drives, our basic feature, he's right on. Mm. And when you put him together with this statement that I said by this famous German philosopher, Carlo Pichner, who said, we now have a generation of boy men. This has never happened in the whole entire history of the world. And he was a very informed man. And I, I had the, uh, the, the pleasure and the honor of meeting him uh, shortly after he made that pronouncement. And, um, if you put him and someone like uh, Jordan, Peter, P uh, Jordan Peterson together and someone like me together, you know, these people, they haven't, a, they haven't any ground to stand on. They're mm -hmm. just going to have to shut their mouth the same way that they shut their, going to shut their mouth on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. When they're asked, why did you do that? They're going to say, oh, well, our father did that. And there's no excuse for that. All right. So you're going to follow your fathers right into hell because the prophets over here, his, his um, example, or his sunnah, is the exact opposite of what you're doing. And that is not the deen. That is not his commandment. That is not the commandment of your God, whom you said is your God, before you incarnated. You admitted that God was your God, and you're going to submit to him, and then you act like this? You act like a spoiled child? Mm. Please, grow up. <laughs> Grow up. Yes. Want someone to sleep with her husband because she doesn't get the car she wants. God almighty. That's like a, a children going in and to the candy store. And, oh, daddy, you didn't give me the jelly beans. I wanted the green one. Oh, yeah, exactly. Jesus. Grow up, woman. Grow up. This is not Islam. This is not even human maturity, let alone spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. For God's sake, get a hold of the truth. Stop pretending. Stop all this hypocrisy holding your hand when you're in public and then uh, berating him in private. No, no, no. You're supposed to serve him. And you're supposed to teach your children to serve you both by serving him. And in doing that, you're serving Allah. That's the divine order. That's the divine order, not your will, woman. Not your will, because you don't have the car you want. You don't have the camel you want. You don't have the, 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 the house you want. You don't have the dress you want. You don't have the jewelry you, don't, you want. Oh, please, you married him. If you don't, if you're not happy with him, part in peace. Stop this nonsense. Mm. Stop it. Another phenomenon that I have noticed uh, that happens quite a lot is women very often, especially in not very good marriages, they are very depressed. Yes. And, it's a common, it, and then it becomes a combination of more than one issue. Like, let's, I'm giving another example. Let's say there's a sister. She's very depressed uh, because she's not in a good marriage. Uh, she doesn't know what her future holds because she's not in a great marriage. And because she's depressed, you know, now it's harder for her to please her husband or serve her husband or say yes to her husband for his needs. Mm. And uh, she doesn't really know if she's depressed because of her husband or because of herself. 
but she's projecting it all on her husband. And she's blaming it on her, mm. all on her husband. And she feels to some degree, if I just got divorced, I'll be happier. So this is one aspect. The other aspect I've seen over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, I see sisters get divorced and I've seen them regret it later on. Because mm -hmm. the, I guess the, the ideal world they had in their mind didn't pan out that way, you can say. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and so many times uh, I've been asked directly or indirectly, can we get back together, you know, by the sister or by the brother. But the point is, is that, you know, uh, let's say she was at home, she was a homemaker, she wants a divorce, she gets divorced, now she has to work, take care of the kids, husband's not there, you know, problem throws other, the life throws other problems at the sister. And uh, I don't really have a, a good solution to, to this, but the two points I'm making right now, they're interconnected in a sense that it is this depressed sister that eventually gets to the point of, I want a divorce, and then is even more depressed once she's divorced. And doesn't mm. have the support system she even did have at one time. Uh, yeah. So this is also happening. What do, how do you understand in a marriage? Am, I'm talking for the sisters. That am I depressed because of myself or am I depressed because of my husband? Uh, who, why am I depressed in marriage? I should be happy. <laughs> mm. Well, each case is individual, so you can't make a, gener a general statement here that's going to cover all. So let's just start with that statement. Um, the phenomenon is real. It's real enough, uh, and it, it has some reasons that are common to all. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is chauvinism. The other one is, there, is that they were not prepared for life which means they were not prepared for marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's the fault of the parents. The parents did not inform the child what to expect. So they entered the marriage with false expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some people get married for the wrong reasons. And the reasons being, oh, they just, well, there's nothing wrong with just, you know, wanting to satisfy the sexual urge, but that's not the reason, the only reason to get married. That's one reason to get married, okay? The other reasons to get married is to in, improve your social status, to raise your children properly, and to contribute to the community. Hmm. All right, that's all part of the process. It's not right. just to get away from mommy and daddy. Okay, right. so if they haven't been informed about those responsibilities, then they're not prepared to take on those responsibilities. Hmm. Now, you have other circumstances that you have to take into consideration, uh, especially when expectations are, are not met. And that's usually the case in all life uh, uh, venues, in all uh, places that we find ourselves, whether it's marriage or a job or the army, whatever the case might be, we expect one thing and then something else happens. The, the thing of it is, is that we're supposed to learn from that experience because Allah doesn't give us anything we can't bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that's Allah not giving us something that we can't bear. But mm -hmm. your parents and your husband or your spouse will do that. You see, that's a different matter, you see. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've heard a lot of uh, pastors and uh, imams uh, say, oh, Allah doesn't uh, give you anything you can't bear to hear, read, read this ayah and uh, go home and wait and Allah will give you strength. Uh, well, I don't need an ayah. I don't need uh, uh, strength from Allah. What I need is uh, relief from this oppression, sir, mm. you see? What I need is a decent job, sir. Mm. Oh, I see you're doing okay. You've got four wives and three cars and two houses, and, but I can't even afford enough to get married. Mm. And you don't work, you just talk. So, you know, I, I, I have a problem with you giving me advice, sir. 
I have a problem here, you see. They're not, the problems are not being addressed. And that's not Allah's responsibility. So don't go blaming it on Allah. Allah gave you uh, something you can't bear. No, society gave you something you can't bear. The man who's supposed to be caliph in your region gave you something you can't bear. Mm -hmm. The husband that you married gave you something that you can't bear. The wife that you married gave you something you can't bear. Now there's a remedy, okay? You talk to each other, you come to an understanding, you face the issue instead of pretending it doesn't exist and you deal with it. Mm. And if you can't deal with it, then you just part in peace, mm. you see? People are not doing that. They're not dealing with it. So look, when, when a, 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 a business partner is not keeping up his end of the bargain, do you stay in business with him? No. What do you do? You have to leave. You, you cut your losses and, and move on, right? Mm. Yeah, well, that's, that's what has to happen. The problem is the society has become so oppressive towards uh, certain people uh, who are supposed to be at the end of a helping hand. They're not getting it. Mm. They're not getting the helping hand. They're mm. not getting the right advice. They're not getting the right uh, kind of financial assistance. They're not getting the right kind of education. And this is not Allah's fault. Mm -hmm. This is the fault of leadership. Yeah. This is the fault of leadership, you see. And so when, uh, when uh, it's time for Hijra, sometimes it's time to leave the Jummah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's time to leave them because they're not providing what you need. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happened. Now, Muslims have left their countries en masse mm. because they couldn't get these problems solved where they were. Mm. Well, why couldn't they get them solved, solved where they were? Well, because it's a cultural thing. It's a thing of sin. It's a thing of illogic. It's a thing of ignorance. So they brought all of this with them to these new cultures. They're getting all these social handouts and they still have the same problems. They can't mm. solve them, mm. okay? This is not Islam's fault. This is not a problem that was given by Allah. Mm. Allah gave the solution, mm. okay? Yeah. And Muslims have rejected the solution, mm. all right? So there are solutions to these problems in marriage, but Muslims are rejecting them. Mm. They're, they're rejecting the truth. When you're rejecting the truth, who are you rejecting? Well, let's go back to the night prayer. You are the truth, you see. So wherever the truth is spoken, immediately the, the, the cosmic dimensions open up and we're right there at the throne. Mm. And that's where power and authority comes from, okay? So when you speak the truth, whoa, the veil is dropped. The veil is dropped. No more pretense. The yeah. veil is dropped. No more pretense. All right, you can hear a pin drop, and then where is your excuse? It has no leg to stand on, no foot, no shoe, you're no trousers, you're naked against the truth. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They were naked. Mm. Not physically naked, they were naked without the protection of Allah, and Allah is the truth. Mm. So without the truth, there's no solution. So people are just going to keep on uh, entering into this fit fitna and making it worse, making it worse. So, and that's what they're doing. And there's no solution other than that, dear brother. So if you want to solve these problems, you've just got to face the truth. You got to tell this uh, so remaining you father. So parents nowadays are overprotective? Yeah. They're so overprotective that they don't teach. I guess that's what city life it's is, not, right? Because if you're in nature, oh, yes. because if you're in nature, you <clears throat> have to face difficulties at some point or another. You well, know? if I, you're in nature, if you're in nature on a farm, you're going to see what the bull is doing to the cow. Yeah. Okay. You're going to see what the fox is doing to the chicken. You're going to see what the hawk is doing to the squirrel or to the mouse. You're going to see it. Okay. And if it's your chicken, you're going to be picking up the rifle and shooting that fox. 
All right. I mean, so, I noticed this when I uh, went camping. When I went camping. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So when I'm at home and I'm trying to get the mm-hmm. to pray, it takes a while, you know, 15 minutes of convincing, yeah. God, you know, for them to pray. But when we were in camping. Yeah. Uh, it's automatic, it's spontaneous. It was spont- It was very spontaneous. It's because they they needed me for everything, right? Because I was the father, and they need uh, me for the mm-hmm. food. They need me for the sleeping bag. They need me for the tent. They need me. Like there is a lot more, you could say, natural dependency. But it was also the fact mm-hmm. that those distractions weren't there, like their video games. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and so um. You know, one of the things I realized was that, oh, that's so interesting because they're a lot more dependent upon me in, in, in the natural world out there. But also yeah, because yeah. you have these houses like the one I have here where they're protected, right? Mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't get to really see life yeah. for what it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's, I think, one of the problems that we have now. That, that is so. Um, in, in our household here on this farm, uh, I'm still in the process of a developing a uh, relationship with my wife's son. He's 10 years old, and he follows me like a shadow. Mm. But uh, here, there's work to be done. Mm. The, the, the animals have to be fed. Their cages have to be cleaned. The, the hay and the, uh, the straw has to be managed. The filth has to be disposed of. Uh, there's all kinds of things that need to be doing, but be, be, be done. And the animals also need to be protected. Now, over the course of uh, three or four months, this boy has be, he first depended on me for everything. And now he's independently helping me. Mm. He's anticipating what needs to be done and he's doing it without mm. my asking him. Mm. Or if I give him a directive, he doesn't have to uh, think about it anymore, just automatically does it. Hmm. Now, you try to do that in the city with some of these city children, it can't be done, you see, hmm. because they, they have no connection to the reality. Everything is up in the head. Everything hmm. is uh, an imagination, hmm. you see. But here, you're grounded. And you're grounded hmm. in what? You're grounded in creation. And you're grounded in creation so that in order for you to walk that walk mm. in that particular place, you have to be connected. You have to have a relationship. And that relationship has to make sense. Mm. That relationship requires communication. That requires communication with the other person. It requires communication with the things that you're becoming and the creatures you're becoming responsible for. Mm. So what's happening with these children and I'm going to bring this to marriage now, is that uh, they're, they're not learning responsibility. And so when they finally get to the point where they take it in the marriage bed, they can't take it. They can't handle it. Mm. They're not prepared. And that's not their fault. Mm. That's the fault of the parents. That's the fault of the moms. That's the fault of the educational system. It's mm. not Allah's fault. Allah mm. did not give them that trial. So stop making that excuse, because if you start blaming that on Allah, Allah is just going to sit there, fold his arms and say, no, I didn't do that. No, 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 no. Yeah, and I gave you the solution. Your imams did that. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah, I got the solution. I gave you the solution, you know, 1,400 years ago. And you're still arguing about how to pray. That's not a solution. Mm. All right. No, you're just still justifying your own position. That's not my position. That's not uh, the prophet's position. No, no, no. I didn't give you this trial. Now, if you're in on the path, if you're walking the path and you come across a trial while you're on the path, that's something Allah gave you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see? Then that's something you have to overcome by Allah's grace. These other problems you're discussing here, they have to be overcome by the grace of the society that you're in because they cause them, not Allah. I hope I've made that clear. Yeah, very, very clear. <laughs> a lot of people are going to get angry. A lot, a lot of people are going to get angry with me about that, but that's the way it is. So that's the truth us, of the matter. So we covered uh, a lot of ground today without maybe going into mm. too much detail, but I think we uh, covered a 
good number of archetypes, right? The, the feminist lady, the, the male chauvinistic, the women being depressed, well, we, the boy man. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe I hope, inshallah, we can discuss this more in the coming uh, weeks. Inshallah, inshallah. We just touched on these things. We're just opening yeah. up a, a Pandora's box here. That's right. Because these are things that nobody's talking about. Yeah. And they need to be discussed. Yep. Okay. That's, and uh, uh, so you're gonna it. you're gonna find out who the you're gonna find out in the comment section and in the rever in the repercussions that you <laughs> get to the second you're gonna find out who the friends of Allah really are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khair and see you next Tuesday, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.